Good evening, Hillview. How about kicking this service off tonight with a baptism? This is a dear young lady, Lexi, and she comes tonight just professing her faith in Jesus Christ, and she stands with her dad, who says, I can't say a word because I'll cry. And I said, you don't have to say a thing. And I see him tearing up behind me and things. And he prayed with us before we came in the water, and it was a powerful, powerful prayer. So Lexi, going to ask you some questions. So Lexi, did you know that you've done some things wrong, and you've told God that you're sorry. Please forgive you. Yes, ma'am. And does, does, did he forgive you now and forever? Yes. And does the Holy Spirit live in you? And you're going to follow Jesus in all that you do. Yes. Amen. Lexi, it's upon your profession of faith that I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be buried in Jesus. Woo! for Lexi. Heavenly Father, we just lift Lexi up to you. Lord, you know the path that she's been on and you know the path of where she's going because Lord, you have been with her every step of the way and you will never leave her. You will never forsake her. You love her. She's your special, precious child. Lord, we ask that you bless her, that you protect her, and you hold her near. Lord, we love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus Christ's precious holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Great way to start a service. Amen. Guys, join me if you would, and uh, we're going to welcome Highland Heights Church from Glasgow, who is here with us. <laughs> Chad hates it when I say that. Highland Heights. That's a church plant of ours. It's actually Highland Hills, but Pastor Chad hates when I say Highland Heights. So I say it. It's really good. All right? And so y'all welcome there here to sing with our choir tonight. And uh, man, we're going to just join in worship together as we celebrate Jesus now for tonight. There are communion stations set up all the way around this building. Uh, there are foot washing stations set up, 10 of them around this building. And so let this be a time of worship for you personally. And also, if someone's been a blessing to you and you want to serve them tonight, feel free to grab them by the hand and take them to a foot washing station and wash their feet. We're going to worship and celebrate Jesus tonight. I, I would also ask you this. If you want to stand up and worship, please do so. If you get tired of standing, you can sit down. It does not matter. Jesus doesn't care, I promise. As long as we lift our voices and our hearts to Him and give Him all that we are. Amen. Amen. And so let's just join in worship tonight. I tell you what, for this first song, let's do stand if you would. And we're going to worship Him together. Let's sing. Skill with flawless words. 
this next song. Stewards, be prepared for that. We're just going to continue to worship him. Good. 
With a melody You surround me with Hey, so Love delivered From my enemy To love my fears I'm gone I'm no longer Stay to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer Stay to fear I am a child of God 
Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet. My Savior on the cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears.
I want to ask you to stand. We're going to have a time of altar. You know, it was on this night that Jesus said to his disciples, If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, then you also should wash one another's. In the New Testament, Jesus is constantly speaking these things, and all of them flow from the first words that he ever said to the disciples. You may remember those first words? Follow me. Follow me. And then all the rest of the words Jesus spoke were examples of how we would follow him. And we're at a crisis in our time and a crisis in our culture where it, it has become desperate that those who claim to be followers of Jesus actually follow him and actually do what he's told us to do. So tonight, as we have a time of altar, I want, I want to remind us the words of the prophet. And Isaiah said, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities and the punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. By his wounds, we are healed. So when Jesus calls us to follow him, let me tell you, it is for his glory and for our good. It's in following him, right, that we, we realize freedom. It's in following him that we realize healing, right? And, and he's calling to you and to me the same way that he called to those first disciples and he said to them, follow me. Follow me. And when Jesus said, follow me, he was saying, you don't need anything else. My grace is sufficient for you. So tonight, we're going to have a time of altar. We've heard the gospel in song. Amen? Amen? And now it's time for us to respond to that word. And so I know there's some of you here, and you've never bowed a knee to Christ. And you know what I pray? I don't pray for your deep understanding or for you to figure it out intellectually. You know what I pray? I pray simply that Jesus would save you. Salvation is a gift of God, right? And I pray that he would save you. And then there's a lot of you here tonight, and you know Jesus has saved you, but you've never been baptized. And I'm, I thank God that we had the example that we had here at the beginning of the service, right? Wasn't that powerful? And we say it here all the time, there is no way that you follow Jesus and it doesn't take you through the baptismal waters. Because if you follow, because like, guess what? Jesus was baptized. And there's some of you here, and you've put that off and put that off. And I think we try to say it in creative and kind ways. But tonight, you know my plea is? That you would stop being disobedient. Because that is an issue of obedience. When Jesus said, if I then your Lord and teacher washed your feet, then you also should wash one another's. Yeah, there, there's a teaching on forgiveness. There's some things going on there. But the bottom line is, it's obedience. And I want to ask that you be obedient. And I pray those of you who need to be saved would come to this altar tonight. We'd love to pray with you. You don't need us, right? If, if the Spirit's working in your heart, invite Christ to come into your life. Ask Him to forgive you of your sin. For those of you who've been saved, you know that you need to be baptized. I pray you just come, find one of us pastors and say, you know what? I need to be obedient in that. And you would, would no longer put that off. And then all over the room, and we've brought, we've brought pain. We've brought disappointment. We've, we've brought disillusionment at things going on. And I ask you to come and lay those things at the feet of Jesus tonight. Just come and lay those things down. So I want to pray. We're going to have a time of altar. And you know what? We've had a powerful moment of worship, right? But what I find is there's many times that we don't mind to hold up a hand. But sometimes we struggle to move our feet. And you can't follow Jesus and your feet be still. Right? You can't stay where you are and follow Jesus. So I'm going to pray. And this altar will be opened up. And I'm just going to ask you tonight, just be obedient to whatever it is he's calling. Whatever it is he's saying, just be obedient to him tonight. And let's respond to him. Father, we come to you because you're the giver of life. We come to you because you created us. We come to you because no one wants more for us than you. And it's also true that nobody wants more from us than you. You, for those of us who are followers of Jesus, you who, who have paid our debt. Our lives belong to you. I pray all over this sanctuary tonight. I pray for obedience. 
For those that need to be saved, that they would be saved. For those that need to be baptized, that they would come and say, you know what, I need to do that. For those struggling with healing or those struggling with forgiveness or bitterness or anger, disappointment, disillusionment. Lord, you are, you are so big, you can handle all those things. And I pray we come and we lay them at your feet. You said to those first disciples what you still say today. Follow me. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name that we pray. Amen, church. This altar is open. Don't wait on anybody else. If you need to come, please come. If you need to make a decision, grab a pastor and say, hey, look, this is what God's doing in my life. But just come tonight. If you don't want to come by yourself, grab the person next to you. I promise, even if you don't know them, I promise they'll come up here with you. But you come. Come. Don't carry that burden anymore. Don't carry that burden anymore. Bring it to the Lord. You come.
church. How many of y'all glad to be in the house of the Lord Jesus Christ tonight? The presence of the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Hey, if you don't mind, if as we, uh, we're really not going to exit, okay? I mean, you are going to go home. We're not sleeping here tonight, but this began the night Jesus has entered into the city. Tomorrow, he would have literally been in that upper room where he washes the disciples' feet. And he breaks bread with his betrayer. I still can't get over that one. That Jesus knew who was going to do him wrong, and he broke his bread to him anyway. Well, you know what Holy Week shows me? I'm not Jesus. First of all, I don't even know if I'd have gone into Jerusalem. I might have been on the other side of Bethpage by now. And so as Jesus is preparing to forgive us, tonight I want this church to rejoice because every day this week already, we have seen someone confess their faith in baptism every day this week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And uh, I told Freddie, I said, Freddie, you know my prayer is this. I would love to see this church baptize somebody every day until Jesus returns. Until Jesus returns. I, I can't, I don't know if you're from another church. You know, I'm, I'm all glad about it, shaking hands and loving one another. But basically that just leaves you in hell. I mean, it's nice. It's just not potent. Let me tell you what is amazing. There's a God, as we have sung tonight, who resided in heaven, who came to earth, and who forgave whosoever will until he comes again. Amen? Now, that's amazing. So, uh, if you don't mind, I want you to welcome all of those who received Christ tonight. It was several. Welcome them into the kingdom of God. I've already talked to Jamie. Jamie said this would be all right. If you all just want to go share the gospel so ridiculously in power uh, on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday that there are so many people to be baptized, this will be our sermon. He is risen, and then we're just going to start baptizing folks. And uh, Keith, you'd be all right singing half a song, wouldn't you? And we just baptize folks from 8 to about 4 in the afternoon. Don't worry. I know y'all are worried about Pastor Jamie. We'll get him some of those little water wings to hold him up about 12. He'll be all right. Guys, you know what? You laugh. I'm looking right now. If everybody went and shared the gospel, there'd be over probably 1,100, 1,200 baptisms on Sunday. And I'm not asking you to do something that's like really cool. I'm asking you to do something that's expected. I'm asking you to do something that's as basic to the followers of Christ as kissing your wife goodnight. It's that real. Or welcoming your child. It's that natural. So as we ease out of here, I wish I could tell you that it'll be real joyous tomorrow. But the sun goes down and darkness begins to play its games. So we must embrace it to know there's a greater day coming. Until we meet again, may the name of the Lord be on our lips, may his love be on our heart, and may his message be on our feet always, and may we tell the world they too can be changed. God bless.